Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for your presence in this place. That it's a, your word is about to liberate us today. We are about to get seriously liberated and set free and delivered to a, a deeper dimension. In the name of Jesus, get ready to be delivered to a deeper dimension. I believe today's word is such a key word. Just a few weeks ago, my wife was preparing to minister at heart and as we do, we'll talk about, we'll feel what, what God's saying, we'll bounce things off each other as we're having a, just a moment together. And, and as she started uh, sharing about the, the, what God had put on her heart to share about bitterness, about issues of the heart, bitterness and forgiveness, I really started, God really started working in us. And we started getting more revelation on it. And I can say in the past however many weeks, three or four weeks, I've been getting really set free myself, and I believe there's more. So this is something I want to really minister on by the help of the, the Holy Spirit in the area of offense. Offense. Okay? So in, in, this, in this teaching, if you like, we are, are going to recognize and overcome a major strategy of the devil. Now I want every person to listen today. I want my kids to listen, okay? Carl, I'm going to ask you later, son. Right? I want you to listen. This is a major strategy of the devil. You listening, Ben? A major strategy of the devil is to get us offended. To get us offended. So when we understand this, we have an opportunity to grow and mature in our relationships and interactions with people. In every sphere of our life. Now, wherever we go in life, we, we can't help. We've got to deal with people. It doesn't mean that we're always in relationship with them all. The people we work with we have to get along with. There might be some people we work with that are completely ungodly. Not great people, but we kind of have to manage relationships everywhere. Employers, people we work with, people who work for us. Relationships in church, relationships with family. We have to, you know, I think it's very important when it comes to relationships is to recognize, I recognize who are the people who, who I know I'm allowing to influence me. Those who are my peers and those who I have an influence and all the responsibility that goes in that. And so God wants us to grow in our life. God wants us to develop in favor with him and with people. Hello, God wants us to have favor with people. That's true. It says in the word of God that when our ways please God, he makes even our enemies be at peace with us. Who could do with some of that in your life? Some doors being opened. You know, doors being opened for you in life by people who naturally would be your enemies. All because we've learned not to hold offense. And Jesus said, Luke 17 verse 1, he said, It is impossible that offenses should not come. So the day and age we're living in, offenses are going to come. We are going to be offended at some point. So once we recognize that, we're just ready for it. And so he's warning them about a major strategy of the enemy. And what happens is, just as God's people are about to get up and start moving somewhere, just as God is starting to move on your life, and you've been touched by the Spirit, and you're freed up, and, you, and God's just about to start moving you, the enemy can just come along and press a few buttons, get you all wound up in strife and offended, and back to square ones like snakes and ladders. So we're going to break that snakes and ladders pattern in our life and just have the ladders. Amen? Amen? Come on. So this is a major strategy of the enemy. Offenses cause division. God has divine connections for us in our life. It breaks unity and divine connections that cause us to delay our destiny or God forbid even to miss our destiny. And offenses cause us to close up. When we're offended, we close up. It says like an offended brother, a brother or a sister who's offended is like a walled city. And in the ancient world, and in, even in this nation, not so many few centuries ago, the city I come from, the city walls are still there in part. So a walled city, that means nothing can come in and nothing can come out. And we are spirit people, aren't we? We're born again people. People of the Spirit. So if we, if we get offended, that means nothing of the Holy Spirit can flow out of our life. Nothing can come in and nothing can flow out. And so if we're in an offended state, we open ourselves up to demonic bondage. We open ourselves up to demonic attack. 
And the Bible actually warns us in Proverbs 4. We are to guard our heart above all things. Our heart is like a garden. It's like a garden. And what grows in it is the result of how carefully we've played our part with the Lord in looking after our heart. If you could imagine, I don't know if you've ever grown up on a street where you might have, you know, you've got somebody's got a nice garden here. And then somebody a few doors down has got a garden and the grass is up here and the shopping trolley's in it. And it's a complete mess. And it's like, I don't know, maybe you grew up and that was your garden. I don't know. I say anything, but we have a house on our street that it's like everybody's front lawn is just nicely mowed, including ours even. And this street across, this house across the street, it's like their grass is up here. <laughs> you know, just a few weeks ago, they had their, like, all their furniture hanging out the window and stuff. It's a crazy house. <laughs> there was a drug bus there the other year. I wouldn't even like to say some of the other things that's gone on there. But look, the state of our, the state of our garden, the state of our life, like a garden, is it full of grass up here and weeds everywhere and all shopping trolleys in it and carrier bags or rubbish everywhere? Or is the grass cut? Is it, is, has it been weeded? And guess who's responsible for that? Well, so in a, state, in a sense, the state of our life is whose responsibility? It's ours. And when we can come off the merry-go-round in the snakes and ladders game of, well, you don't understand, they hurt me. Hey, we're all going to get offended. It's not, we can't stop the offence come. Sure, in some instances, we can have appropriate boundaries. Obviously, we need appropriate boundaries in relationships. You know, we need to forgive people. For instance, listen, we need to forgive everyone who's ever hurt us. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean we have to move and we have to be completely reconciled with them. If you're a lady and you've had some guys use and abuse you, you forgive them. But you never put yourself in a situation to be around those guys or guys like them ever again. You keep yourself distant. Yes, be aloof. You know, it's just common sense. There's boundaries. So you can have boundaries in life. But still, offences will come. And it's how we respond to offences. If we respond to offences and lean into Jesus and see how much he went through us for us at the cross, how God in Christ has abolished his offence towards us, then that bitterness can turn to sweetness and we can be healed. And then what our garden is something beautiful and prosperous. Now the word offence means this. The word fence or offence is the Greek word scandalon. Where we get the word scandal from. Do you know, I've, I've never read it, but I've, I, I should do. It's one of these books that I should read. It's, it's, but I've heard it's excellent. Is John Bevere's book called The Bait of Satan. Has anyone ever read The Bait of Satan? You've read it? Anyone read that? The Bait of Satan. It's, I've heard it's an excellent book. And it's on this subject of offence. I've never had the chance to read it, but get that. And the Greek word for offence is the word scandalon. Now we live, in a, we live in a day and age that loves scandals. The media is full of scandals. Everyone wants to read about smut and gossip and look what they did. Read about offence. And it's like offence, scandal, is a food. And I don't know if you've ever been, you remember, if you've worked in a place or, you know, on a Monday morning, it's gossip, 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 and they did this and they did that. I remember working in one place and this young girl and she knew I was Christian and I remember her just one time saying, oh, can I, can I tell you something? And I'm not, I promise you won't tell anybody. And I went, and, and she, about a colleague, and I went, no, don't tell me. Do you know that? She went, can I tell you this about so and so? But don't tell anyone. I went, no, don't tell me. And she looked at me and went, what? I went, do I need to know? She went, no, but don't tell me then. I didn't want to take the offense. You know, maybe this girl, she was going to gossip about or this guy had done something immoral and, you know, slept behind his girlfriend's back and done something like that. And everyone who gossips all this stuff, they're all doing it themselves. And when we, as believers, if we take this in and drink this stuff in, we're taking this poison into ourselves. So it's like, no, no, I don't need to know that. You know, it's like the people in the armed forces, it's called like need to know. If you're in the forces, you, you don't go listening to secrets. You only know what you need to know. I don't need to know this stuff. So I don't want to, we don't feed on scandal. We don't feed on offence. Now listen, offence means trap. Now what is a trap? A trap 
is something that entices you like a fish. A fish, the offense is the bait on the hook. Listen, but when the fish goes for the bait, the tasty bait, it gets a hook through its, its mouth. And that's bad. Offense, offense is actually the bait of the trap. Do you hear that? Something in us wants to get offended. It feels good to be offended. It feels good to be indignant. Offense is a bit like that. that it's that temptation, enticement. I don't know if anyone remembers the old uh, the, the Narnia, Lion, Witch in the Wardrobe. What was the, the, what was the offense, the scandal on that got Edmund? It was the Turkish delight. He loved that Turkish delight and it cost him. That's my favourite. I love Turkish delight. I just thought I'd throw that out. If anyone feels a special anointing on Turkish delight, send it my way. But the trap, the offence, offence, the scandal on is the actual bait. And when we, we go for the bait and it tastes good, but before we know it, we've got a big hook in our mouth. We've got our foot in a snare and we're trapped. We're trapped. And what is it? A scandal or an offence is to be offended by some action and judge. It's when we say, hey God, I know you're judge, but can you just like move along from your throne of judgment, please? And I want to sit on it. And I'm going to sit here and I'm going to be judge. And God doesn't take too kindly to do to that. It's when, when offended, a person's view of justice and righteousness revolves around them and in relation to how people treat them okay it's totally and utterly self-centered it's not in the least bit god honoring so it's my view of what's right and wrong justice and righteousness is how people treat me Offence often occurs when people fail to meet our expectations. It happens in marriage. We feel that this person is going to meet all of our needs. Hello. That is a total delusion. Absolute total delusion. You can only, God can meet the core foundational needs of a human being. Yeah. We're created for that. Yeah. And so when we, it's, it's wonderful. Look, we can enjoy people. We can love people. We can have committed relationships, walking in the light, healthy, committed relationships. Marriage can be healthy. Marriage is a covenant relationship, okay? But when people fail to reach, meet our expectations, we become offended at them. I would guess that for those married here today, if you're honest, the person who's offended you more than any other person is probably your spouse. <laughs> I mean, I love my, my wife more than anyone here. But in the course of the years being married, we probably offended each other more than anybody else. And we've had to learn to get over it. Hello. <laughs> Just, <laughs> you know, and, and you know what? It's like the, the person... I mean, my wife's offended me. I can't, can't, I've lost count of the amount of time she has offended me. And you know what? I don't care. Is there anything wrong with my wife? Absolutely not. She just happens to be human and not be me. And so my self-centered little bubble got burst. That's it. You live your life with somebody else who's not you. You you kind of, in a delusion, think that they'll be like you and think like you and it'll all be bliss. And hello, this is another human being with a different set of thoughts and feelings and everything. And that's why marriage is called dying. It's about dying to self. You know, um, Hallelujah! <laughs> I remember we had the, the we had the worship leader Roy Fields. We hosted him a few years ago, and, and within five minutes of him meeting us, he went, he went, "Hey, bro, I married up too. Give me a fist bump." <laughs> Here's a, a Roy Fields is a really nice guy. He did, "Hey, I married up too." I thought he's so smart. I mean, look, I'm working class Newcastle background. My wife is some. <laughs> so it's been interesting over the years. I mean, even how I speak, my accent, or bad habits, manners. <laughs> so that's what marriage is about. We, and, and, hallelujah. Do you know what it is, though? Offended people 
But yeah, I'm not carrying any offence towards my. I love my wife. Between between her and the Holy Spirit, I'm becoming something. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Listen, offended people will not readily see that they are offended. They don't. But offended people say to themselves or to others, I am hurt. They hurt me. No one understands me. Offended people are touchy people. You ever been around touchy people? Yeah. Yeah. Are you touchy? <laughs> I'm not looking at anyone in particular. I'm looking at the same. Is there anyone prickly here? Anyone moody? Well, we're high maintenance. <laughs> high maintenance people are offended people. People with special interests. Oh, don't go there. Don't press. Don't go there. Don't press. I've seen it in church. Loads of times. High maintenance, no go areas, special interests, moody, offended. And if we're all honest, I put my hands up. I have been offended on a few occasions. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is the bait of Satan. This is the Turkish delight. This is the, 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 the cheese and the mouse trap. That you go and boom and your legs caught. Ah, imagine getting caught in a snare. Like a bear trap. Imagine how painful that would be. You're immobilized instantly. You're going on all right through life. God's just starting to use you. You're starting to move. You get offended. Instead of being on the path of walking in love, walking in forgiveness, something comes, you get offended, you step up, bam, in a snare. You ain't moving anywhere now. You are now taken captive or you're swimming in the river of God's spirit. And God says, keep me this side of the river, keep me this side. And in comes a hook over here with some nice chocolate on it. You go, ooh, I found it. Oh. You get offended and you go, Pah. now you're out the river. Now you're out the presence of God. It's very, very serious. And bitterness, which is related to offense, it's all serious because it spreads. It's like gangrene. It, it spreads. It's a bitter root. And we must be delivered of offense, delivered of bitterness. <coughs> Paul said to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24, he said this, The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all people. I mean, don't look to try and cause them more offense. Be able to teach, be patient, be patient. Oh, don't be pagan. Be patient. Listen to this. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God, per adventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Say the snare of the devil. Yeah. The snare of the devil has a bait. It's a fence. Who are recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. So listen, some people are captured by the devil at the devil's will. That means they become the devil's punch bag. But they've been in church for years. But they're still getting battered and bruised everywhere. They're like the devil's punch bag. Goodness me. I mean, Jesus, you died for everyone. When your blood works for everyone. But this person over here is a special case. This one's a special case. They've been taken captive by the devil at his will. They took the bait of offense. And that word capture means to be taken as a prisoner of war. And people in this condition, they don't even realize what's happened to them. They're under deception. And we can be thinking... Oh yes, yes, I understand this teaching. So, I, I, and I've seen people under deception. But let's everyone let's apply the word to our hearts today. And say, Lord, is this me? Lord, is this me? Can we be, all be, myself included, as I'm preaching this? Can we all just put our hands up, Lord, and say, Lord, is this me? Is this me? At the Last Supper, Jesus revealed that one would betray, and and oh Lord, is it him? Oh Lord, is it him? And one one of the disciples said, Lord, is it me? Lord, is it me? Have I got offence? People who are offended do not realise that they're actually opposing themselves. They're holding back their own progress in life. Oh Lord, I pray this is the year that I meet that uh, spouse. But their own offence holds them back from ever being free to meet a spouse. Lord, I pray this is the year that this is the year I get my breakthrough. This is the year I get this. But they're opposing themselves. 
And the word of God says they've got to recover themselves. And that in the Greek means they've got to become sober again. They become sober again. That means they've been under the influence of a spirit. Who's ever been drunk as, in your younger days, hopefully? You ever been really drunk and realised the next day, what on earth did I do? What did I do that for? Think, what a complete idiot. What a complete nana. I mean, people will go out on a Friday night and normal people, and they'll get themselves into violence and fights. I mean, people, you'll hear about people who commit violence and say, I don't know what happened. Something came over me. Yeah, it was a demon. And so offence is a spirit. And we've got to recover ourselves from under it, from under the deception of it. We've got to allow the word of God to penetrate our heart and say, that says, I, and you are offended. And say, like, yes, Lord, that's me. I carry offence. Offences destroy relationships. We're called to love people. But look, listen, just what everyone in this room will have character traits, personality traits. I could personally find annoying. I could probably find something annoying about every person in this room. And you could. But you know what? It really doesn't matter. Because we don't regard one another in the flesh. What really matters is that we're moving on with God. Okay? I love my wife. I don't find her. I don't find. And we had a bit of a joke before. I don't find my wife annoying. I find her a woman of God. She's moving on with God. Okay, when we're moving on with God, as long as the river's not dry, if we're a dry riverbed, that, that's the time to get concerned. A church that's a dry riverbed, that's when the people start rah, 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 biting, and biting each other because there's no, there's no water around. We just start seeing each other in the natural. So we don't, we're called to love people. Now listen to this, this is sober. Matthew 24, 10. Jesus said, in the last days, many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. I believe we're living in the last days. Jesus says, many will be offended. Now listen, even among, if Jesus said that, who's to guess that amongst the people in this room today, there's at least one person in a condition of offense. Just turn to the person next to you and say, this is a word for you. <laughs> and now you're offended. <laughs> <laughs> now we are offended, oh no. Have some healing. So if Jesus said many shall be offended, there's a good chance, even listening to this message, there's a good chance there's some people here today in a condition of offense. I pray the Holy Spirit can show us because listen, if we're offended, that means we're in a trap. That means our life is contained. Amen. That means we're not able to move forward. If that's felt like that you in your life and you've been contained and frustrated and it's just been hard and dragging this horrible metal snare around, then you're in a condition of offence. You've been held captive. Amen. And today you can come out. There's a progression in what Jesus taught here. Jesus said, number one, there's offense. Number two, there's betrayal. Number three, there's hatred. You may think, wow, that's a bit rough. Well, let's look at that. I mentioned before, a brother offended is harder to be one than a strong city. Proverbs 18, verse 19. So, the cities had walls. And offenses, when we're offense, offended, we build up walls around our heart to prevent ourselves being hurt again. Nothing gets in and nothing gets out. And we have strongholds now erected. Now who's responsible for the state of our heart? Say, say I am responsible for my heart. I'm responsible for my life. It's me. I'm the, you know, it's me. So when we're like this, there's no reception of the Holy Spirit flowing in. And there's no, there's no outflow of the Holy Spirit. That means there's no anointing presence in our life. Think, why, why? Why can't I just have God and forget people? Would maybe be easier. Because if we're not walking in love with people, we can't love God who we can't see. Amen. And so offense happens. The next thing is betrayal. Now betrayal, the word betrayal to a lot of people would be to, um, like, to violate allegiance, uh, to give away secrets, that sort of thing. But the word betrayal also 
means to, it, it basically means to drop people. It means to drop people when we can just cut people off. It, and in modern culture, I think obviously with social media, I don't know about you, if someone texts me or sends me a message, I just feel a conviction I can't ignore that person. I may be extremely busy, but I'll make a mental note, even make a little post-it note, send them a message back. That's a human being made in the image of God. And I'm not this important pastor that they're not important to me in my glorious anointing. It's a human being. Not an animal, someone who God made. And I think in this day and age of social media, because it's literally like that, we can, people are... People are not useful. We treat people, we relate to people. I think in the church now, we, we, the church can be, can be about are people useful? And because there's a lot of, look, I think great leadership training is good. Communication training is good. But a lot of this training can come into the church and leadership communication training. And it's great skills, but somehow the heart isn't warm. And it's cold. Yeah. I remember one pastor I was with uh, several years back, and he was such an inspiration to me how he valued and loved people. And he was a mighty man of God with a strong anointing on his life for healing, deliverance, miracles, preaching 50 countries of the, of the, of the, of the, of the world. Met heads of state. And I met him once, and I used to meet him quite a bit. And he says, oh, I've got a lunch appointment now. I'm meeting somebody else. And his next appointment, I was just really touched. He was a guy from his church who just had learning difficulties. Just a poor guy. He hadn't worked for years. Wasn't anyone useful to him. Just someone because he was a real pastor. He actually loved, he, he loved people. I thought, God, I, I want to be like that. You don't want to get so, whatever we are in life, whether pastor or whatever business or anything we're doing or in church, we, we, people can literally listen. People can come to church for networking and that's it. Just for networking, for business opportunities. I'm not saying that the pe people of God wants to prosper as people and yet in amongst the people of God there'll be business blessings. Amen, that's fine. But when the culture is not valuing people, I mean, goodness me, just stop and think. How valuable is a human being? I mean, what is the value? Every drop of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And the word of God says, look, when you have these things where you're like this and you're, you're sinners, become judges in your heart. Yes, there's honor. There's honor. And the word, the word of God says, double honor to those who preach the word. Amen. There's all that. There's all. But there's got to be love. We can't have. When we have a fence, we build up walls. Nothing comes in. Nothing goes out. Church become church is a business. People are useful. People are commodities. Social media teaches us to be like that. And when they're not useful anymore, we just drop them. We drop them, and we just drop church. That's why people these days are flaky. Can be flaky. Self-centered. Self-serving. It's all about protecting self. Now again, we need appropriate boundaries in life still, but we still got to walk in love. I mean, if I have boundaries with people, it's in God. But still to view that person with redemptive eyes, to always see them have a way forward, always, you know, not to ever give up on people, to ever write people off. I think in the years that we've pastored, we've had to say that two people, just two people, in several years, look, you can't come again, but it was never full stop. It was like, go away for a month and think about your, like, um, your inappropriate behavior towards women, okay? And I will meet with you during that week and we'll chat about your issues. You know, there was a boundary, but it wasn't like full stop, we've given up on you, you are irredeemable, you are... Pfft. I mean, that was extreme. It wasn't, this was years ago. Nobody here would know. So we never, look, I want to tell everyone here, you're not here because you're useful. You're not here because you're useful. Valuable, yes. 
Yes, you're very valuable. And honestly, the contributions that you make, very valuable. Thank you. But you're not useful. You're valuable. So offence can lead to betrayal where we just treat relationships as commodities which can move to hatred. And hatred is when we have strong feelings of anger, rage or hostility. And it's like a seed on the inside of us that can develop and become destructive to others and to ourselves. And, and we think, what, that can happen in church? Yes, it, it can. But it all starts from offence. And if we've taken that chocolate, the cheese of offence in the mouse trap, we are trapped. We are now not able, we are demonically bound, we are not able to relate to people in a godly way. And in those ungodly ways, we'll either have the wrong relationships, we'll have no boundaries with the wrong relationships, you know what I mean? Get into the wrong, you know. Or, or we're just the right people, we're just not letting anything in, nothing out. Hard-hearted. To the point where hatred, now hatred sounds strong, but Jesus said it, it's where we, we all can become so poisoned and self-centered in our poison. Where we have strong feelings at the thought of some people. Look, one of the litmus tests of have I forgiven somebody is just think of that person. What do you feel? I can honestly say in church, we've been in church a long time. Over the years in church, we have seen some pretty horrible things at times. Why? Because there's human beings in the equation. And you could get really bitter really messed up in life in family i mean here in this room here today there's some things that have happened to you that are just not fair just plain not fair and so when we get like that and we're poisoned it's a seed and so we have to check our heart we can feel glad when that person's not doing so well i feel really threatened and jealous if they're getting blessed we can even assassinate people's character. People can get so prickly, moody and touchy and hurt that when a button gets pressed, something comes over us, we down tools, walk away, blow up, or just, that's it. That's the offended person. This can come over us at times. You see, God wants to move us forward. And there's some things that have happened in our lives that are just not fair. Some things that people have done to us, our upbringing, our circumstances that have happened in life are plain not fair. And we've got an offence. And the word of God says in Psalm 124 verse 6, My soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken. We are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Today, Jesus is going to break the snare. Amen. All we got to do is give him permission. All we got to do, if we've been offended, if we've just been so hurt, I've been at times in my life where, yes, you make inner vows where you say, people are going to hurt me again. And guess what? You just get more and more her. Yeah. And as we grow in this revelation, we're going to go through life and you know what? We'll be around difficult people. We have to learn how to handle difficult people in life and have some appropriate boundaries. But we can't encase our heart in concrete and take offence. If it wasn't for the cross, we'd have a right to take offence in a sense. But yeah, we could go and stone someone to death for sinning against us. But because of the cross, because at the cross, God in Christ has reconciled himself to us. Our offences are away. Can we let go of the spirit of offence today? Can we let go of that? We may have been offended at churches. And sometimes, you know, in church, sometimes our offence has a, a guise of the Holy Spirit over it. But it's not the Holy Spirit. And it's something I've had to really get out of my heart. 
because you can get on fire for God and for miracles and for the supernatural and, and, and you think your corner of the Christian area, that's it. And it's like this everywhere. And it's they're, they're not in it, or they're holding the Holy Spirit back, or they're not into this. And you can actually carry a fence. We can carry a fence on the way that things should be done, and all these different areas. But God doesn't give us the permission to hold a fence. Do we need healing and how we can maybe get some re relationships reconciled? I'm sure we can. And we'll receive revelation from God on these things. Some people that have hurt us, you need to maintain definite boundaries. You can't. If you're a woman, you can't be around guys that have used and abused you. You can't be around those types of guys. Men as well. For, and, 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 you, know, you just can't. But there'll be some relationships that God wants to heal. Then maybe you've been hurt by people in authority. And God wants to heal that. Now listen, I want everyone to close their eyes here and I'm going to take a bold step. Sometimes in the UK, in our culture, you will hear a message like this and then a general prayer at the end. And we still go away bound. Just everybody, please close your eyes and don't move. Just stay where you are, close your eyes. Every eye closed. I want you to forget the person next to you, even if you're married to them. Forget them. For now. Just you and God. And I want you to be absolutely honest before God. Be honest before God. Be humble. If you carry a fence, put your hand up now. If you carry a fence, put your hand up now. Because it's by doing that, you know, you go, oh, that was a bit forward, getting people. No, this is how you get free. We expose it. The devil is a liar. Now, if you put your hand up now, I want to invite. And if I want to invite people to come forward right now and get delivered of the spirit of offense. Because what the spirit of God, the spirit of God, if the spirit of God's going to move in this church and you're carrying offense. You're going to get moving for God in three months time and the devil's going to come along and press your button. You're going to be in trouble. You're going to get really offended at something sooner or later. And I promise you, I'll say as a pastor, my heart is not, I don't want to offend anybody. Like Paul said to Timothy, with gentleness and with meekness. And I have been offended. I'll confess one area. I was offended and affected the ministry. I was offended at what I considered seeker sensitive churches. I was really proud. And then our oldest daughter went through a crisis and she got some free tickets to go to Rock Nations at Life Church, which in my heart I used to berate as a seeker sensitive church, now since repented, obviously. And my daughter went there and got born again and saved. I was stood in the back of the meeting and I knew when Dave Niblock was preaching and I could feel the presence of God at Rock Nations. He went, I have a word for someone, a pastor's daughter. I thought, my daughter's down the front getting saved right now. I thank God that he humbled me. I could have chose to be a proud idiot. I could have lost my kid. I could have, you know what I mean? It's just not worth it to stay stuck. Thank you, Jesus. Does everyone just come? We're all getting delivered of offense. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is, don't feel exposed. This is the devil being exposed. We just expose lie. Everyone just close your, close your eyes right now. Just lift your hands to Jesus. And you're saying, I renounce my holding offense. My right to be offended at people, at life, even at you God. I am not my own. I am bought with a price, with the precious blood of Christ. And I repent of offense, of bitterness. God, I cry out, deliver me today. Deliver me of offense today. I have no rights to hold on to it. 
And from this day, I refuse offence. I'll just carry on praying. If we walk out today and offence presents an opportunity, we've got to say no. We can't let it in seven times worse. We can't let it back in. Do you know I remember? Jesus, thank you Lord. Just deliver, deliver, pray, pray. Get hungry, you need deliverance from offence. We declare the spirit of offence. I address the demon of offence right now. Binding these people. You have no more legal right. You have no more legal rights. I break your power. Your power is broken. If you've been sexually abused but in any way, even violated to the highest extent that a person can be, that person, forgiving them, does not make it right. But forgive them and let go of the offense. In Jesus' name, we declare that poison goes. You've been betrayed in life. You've been let down so badly. Life hasn't been fair. Let it go. You're not your own anywhere. You've been bought by blood. By the blood of the Lamb, you're free. You do not belong to yourself. You're a love slave of Jesus. Yes, you're a child of God, but you're a slave. In the name of Jesus, go. Spirit of offense, go. Spirit of offense, go. Spirit of offense, go. Go. Renounce the spirit of offense. Offended at churches, offended at pastors, offended at employers, offended at spouses, offended at every person. Lord, I renounce offense and resentment. Resentment go from my life. I am free. Free as a child in Jesus' name. Free. Free from all offense. Free. Get ready to receive and put your hands up right now. Free from offense in Jesus' name. Spirit of offense, go! 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 God is delivering people from a spirit of offense today. Listen, get ready to let this, this spirit's got to get out of you. I'm going to count to three in a moment. When I say exhale, I want you to breathe out. The word spirit means breath. That's how it came in, that's how it goes out. Get your hands lifted to Jesus right now. I take authority in the highest name over the spirits of offense right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Exhale. Out. Out. Get out. Get out. 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 Spirit of offense. Out. Spirit of offense. Out. Out. Be delivered. Set free. <sighs> Set free, set free, set free, set free, set free, a fence go. Say, I let go of a fence. I let go of a fence. I am free from the day. Free from a fence. Free from a fence. Free from a fence. Spirit of a fence, go. 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 Spirit of offense. God is preparing the new ground. God is preparing the new ground for the spirit to come. For the spirit to come. God is preparing the new ground. For the spirit to come. For the spirit to come. For the spirit to come. come. Can we be like the Apostle Paul and be just surrendered? Lord, I'm not my own. I'm no longer my own. Spirit of offense, free from that spirit. Free for what God wants to bring. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be delivered now. Be delivered now. Out. 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 Let it go. Out. 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 In Jesus' name. Out. In Jesus' name. Spirit of offense, leave. Snare, leave. Thank you, Lord. Spirit of offense, go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Spirit of offense, go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let the devil try and deceive you and go, yeah, but they don't understand. You know, one of the ways the devil comes and he, 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 he mimics 
He tries to lie to you and tell you that it's the Holy Spirit speaking. Catch this. The devil is very bitter. The devil himself genuinely feels that he's been hard done to. He actually feels that. If you were to talk to him, and I wouldn't recommend it, he got thrown off the holy mountain of God. And in his twisted little mind, in his depraved, disgusting, poisonous soul, he believes he should be on that mountain. And that God was totally unjust doing that to him. And so when we get poisoned, we think it's something as the Holy Spirit saying, I've come to comfort you. I've co I understand what they did. You know, that's the devil. The Holy Spirit will never, ever agree with offence. The Holy Spirit will never agree with offence and bitterness. He said, yes, you, my child, you're hurt. But come to the cross. Come to the cross. The Holy Spirit will never put you in fellowship with bitter people. Christians who get together and through social media, it's happening. These little groups, of they, their agreement is based around unforgiveness and bitterness. They've all been hurt the same way. That is demonic, demonic fellowship. Father, we thank you for the breaking of it today. The breaking of it today. It must break the day. Please, it must break. I just feel such an unction as I'm saying. It's got to break the day. You've no idea how much goodness God wants to release in your life if you agree with this fully. Not just in the moment now, but tomorrow morning, throughout this week. Do not listen to the devil. Do not agree with bitter people. Even in your marriage, be careful. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for deliverance this day. Thank you, Jesus. Let's receive the sweetness of the Spirit. Sweetness of the Spirit. This is bringing us into the rest, guys. Sweetness of the Spirit. Let him just touch those hurt parts. Those hurt parts. Shabaraka, sweetness of the Spirit. 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 Offense goals. Offense goals. You know, cynicism is a manifestation of offense. Cynicism is awful. It's not clever. We're getting out of hurt. You know, hell is full of people who are hurt. Hell is full of people who are hurt in this life and are hurt now, who genuinely are filled with poisonous bitterness as to why they're there. And God doesn't, that's not a place for us guys. And even if the rest of our life on earth was still pretty tough, I tell you, it's nothing compared to the glories that's going to follow. It's nothing, it's nothing compared to the glories that's going to follow. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, haribaku vorremate, kremoso rema. This has been a, a, even if today you think, well, does not maybe apply to me today, this will apply in five years' time, I guarantee you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Kore babaringa felano sitare kateshan dori makiata rema rabati kata. It's broken hearts. This is brokenness. This is real brokenness before God that brings revival. There's a difference between being wounded and being broken. We ain't wounded anymore, broken, yeah. broken before God. Thank you, Lord, that you've taken this. You've taken this. I thank you, Lord, every injustice, every unfair thing was done to you at the cross. We declare, as we just as we come to this time, we, we declare the power of the cross, the power of the blood. We declare the power of the blood of Jesus. The power of the blood of Jesus. He was punished 
for our iniquities, for all the poisonous, rotten, horrible things that have been in us or done to us. He drank the cup down to the dregs. He drank the dregs of our iniquity.